Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Ultimate Lease Accounting Series. In our previous video, we defined a lease liability as the present value of the remaining lease payments. And I also walked through various types of lease payments as allowed under ASC 842. Today, I'm going to explain how to calculate both the lease liability and the right of use asset, then walk through examples of each. Let's get started. Example four from the Ultimate Lease Accounting Guide, how to calculate the lease liability. So for this example, we're dealing with Tenet Co., a private company with a calendar year end and a January 1st, 2022 transition date. The dates for the lease agreement we already reviewed in our third example, but we're going to talk about some of the payment terms. So this agreement has a lease term for five years with two five-year renewal options, both of which they've already decided are reasonably certain to be exercised. Also, the tenant has a purchase option available to them for $100,000 that they are also reasonably certain to exercise. And then the lessor provides a rent holiday for the first month. After that, tenant co is going to pay base rent of $2,000 monthly and quarterly CAM payments. There will also be annual base rent escalations, and those are going to be equal to the percentage increase in CPI for the previous 12 months. CPI for December 2021 to set a base amount was 0.6%. And then the tenant is also going to owe payments equal to 2% of sales with a minimum required amount of $200 a month. We have a usual range for sale. And then finally, we know that Tenant Co. has decided to use the risk-free rate for this calculation. Let's look at the various payments required by this contract. First, the tenant is required to pay base rent of $2,000 monthly and quarterly CAM payments with amounts to be based on actual maintenance activities. So yes, the base rent is a fixed payment and that will be included in the lease liability calculation, but the CAM is not going to be included because that is a non-lease component. Next, the tenant has a purchase option for $100,000 that it is reasonably certain to exercise. And again, yes, the purchase option is a lease component and part of the lease payments. Then lastly, the first lease term is five years and there are two five-year renewal options. Again, the tenant is reasonably certain to exercise these. And again, this base rent with the renewals and the first term those are all included in the initial lease liability calculation. So on to a couple of our other payments required by the contract. The tenant will have annual base rent escalations equal to the percentage increase in CPI for the previous 12 months. And then we have CPI as a base to calculate the percentage increase. So for this one, so yes, this is a lease component, but it's a variable payment because the increase to CPI is not yet known. So this is not a variable payment based on an index or rate because we don't yet know the amount and it would not be included on in the lease liability calculation. And then next, the tenant will also owe payments equal to 2% of sales with a minimum required amount set at $200 monthly, and then we're given a sales range. So this one, this is a lease component as well. This is a in substance fixed payment because the contract specifies that minimum of $200 owed monthly. So once you've determined which payment streams will be included in the lease liability calculation, you can create your payment schedule basically a listing of all the cash payments that will be made over the lease term that you determined previously. And so you can see here we have our base rent. We used 179 months times the $2,000 base rent because we have that first rent holiday. And then we have the $200 sales minimum amount also at 179 months because of the rent holiday. And lastly, there is the purchase option of $100,000.
adding all three of those amounts up, you get a total fixed payment undiscounted of 493,800. The final step of the lease liability calculation is to choose your interest rate. Now in this example, we're told that Tenet Co. has elected to use the risk-free rate and that at lease commencement, that rate is 3%. So you take all of these inputs, the lease payment schedule, the number of periods, um, which is the lease term and the discount rate and calculate the present value of the remaining payments. And one of the ways that you can calculate the present value is to use Lease Query's present value calculator. I'll walk you through that real quick. This is our downloaded present value calculator. Use this with payment streams of any type. Um, enter those inputs and you can calculate a present value. Um, here we use the calculator to calculate the present value of the future lease payments for this example. You start with the input of number of periods. Um, we use the 181 as the number of periods. We set our lease term um, back in example three at 180 periods. Um, the extra one month is taking into account the purchase option made at the end of the month. We also plug in the rate that we're using. Um, you can choose if it's going to be an annual or a monthly rate. Here we use the annual rate, which is the risk-free rate a tenant co elected to use. We determined that we're using monthly periods. Um, you also can use years and I think quarters. And then again, specifying that we made the payments at the beginning of the month. You look here we entered in the total cash stream of 493,800. We had that amount um, in our slides previously when we totaled the payments. So the present value of all of those payments is 380,967. And this will be our lease liability amount for this example. If you're not using the present value calculator, discount the various payment streams and add them together like we show here. And we come to that same total, 380,967 as the present value of the 493,800 total payments. This calculated um, using the present value formula in Excel. Next, we'll go over example five how to calculate the right of use asset. To calculate the right of use asset, we also need to review some of these additional payments from the scenario. Tenant Co. received a tenant improvement allowance of $50,000 as an incentive. The less were paid that amount to the contractor directly for the construction of the improvements, and that was all paid prior to the lease commencement date. The lessor also paid Tenant Co. $10,000 um, to reimburse them for moving expenses, and that was paid at lease commencement. And finally, Tenant Co. incurred initial direct costs of $5,000 to enter into the lease agreement. So to calculate the right of use asset, we take all of those additional payments and determine how they need to be treated to calculate the right of use asset. The first one being the $50,000 of tenant improvement allowance that was paid directly to the contractor on behalf of the lessee. This was paid prior to lease commencement. So this is a lease incentive and lease incentives, if they're paid at or before commencement, are included in the right of use asset calculation. They're subtracted from the lease liability. And next, the lessor paid Tenant Co. a reimbursement of $10,000 for moving expenses. This was paid at lease commencement. Again, this is a cost reimbursement, and that is going to be a lease incentive as well, also subtracted to get to the right of use asset calculation. Lastly, is the $5,000 of initial direct cost that Tenant Co. incurred. and initial direct costs are also adjustments for the right of use asset. Those are added to the lease liability calculation. So once we review all of those payments and their treatment, we'll go through the 
right of use asset calculation. We start with the lease liability that we calculated previously in example four of 380,967. We subtract the tenant improvement allowance paid to the contractor. So even though this wasn't paid directly to tenant co or the lessee, it was paid on their behalf and it was a tenant improvement allowance or incentive to them. So this would be included in the right of use asset adjustments. Next is the reimbursement for the movie expenses paid at commencement. Those are also subtracted to come to the right of use asset total. And then lastly, the initial direct costs of $5,000, those are added. So the aggregate amount of the lease liability plus all of those adjustments is gonna be 325,967. And then that will be our right of use asset. That wraps up this video. You now know how to calculate both the lease liability and the right of use asset.